Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of DK Tour Fishing. I want to talk to you guys about something pretty special today, and that is small crankbaits, actually. Um, as you can see, I got a couple of my crankbait boxes out here, my smaller crankbaits, and I want to be showing you guys, um, you know, some of the small crankbaits that really work for me on the water, and I want to explain to you a little bit why I might downsize to a smaller crankbait. Now there's several reasons why you might want to make a downsize presentation to a smaller crankbait, but not all crankbaits or not all small crankbaits are created equal. We have so many different crankbaits on the market, um, they have different actions, you know, some have a wider wobble, a tighter wobble, they have different profiles, different shapes, different lengths, so you know, a lot of this is going to really affect, affect how many fish you catch because the, you have to really aim to match the fish's personality for any given day you're on the water because the fish can act different you know they might act different tomorrow than they did the day before so um, we're gonna get into smaller crankbaits a little bit I'm gonna get into the baits that I have confidence in and I'm gonna talk about the baits that I know and trust that I would personally use on the water and I'm gonna to explain to you guys what the benefits are of each one of those baits but I have a lot of crankbaits we're not gonna really go into each and every one that I have we're gonna keep this on a topic so what I want to do is I want to kinda of do a comparison between two of my favorite small crankbaits and we're still gonna look at other crankbaits around that and we're gonna put them up against um, other crankbaits that are larger than them or in the same their same model crankbaits in the larger size class to really give you guys some perspective um, on you know the size of the crankbaits and uh, you know how it could really make a difference in what you're doing today I want to show you guys this is a KVD Silent Square Bill 1.0. Now, right here, I want to put this guy up against the Lucky Strike, the Rick Clun. It's the RC2. It's um the, the same exact size, pretty much, guys, of that 1.0. And these are two baits that I really use a lot when I go to downsize my crankbait presentation. Um, you know, as you can see. These right here, these are all KVD Silent Square Bill 1.0s, and these right here, these are all your um, your Rick Klung or um, the Lucky Strike RC2 Square Bills. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to explain a little bit a little bit about each one of these baits. I'm going to also talk about uh, modifications that you can make to your smaller square bills that might accommodate. Um, a different fishing situation uh, like say colder water temperature or you know more lethargic fish so I got the split ring pliers out guys we're gonna get into talking about you know bait modifications as far as you know hooks that are gonna increase your hookup ratio as well as hooks that will change the action on your bait you know to try to really dial in that bite now before I really get started and I start getting hands on with a lot of this stuff and showing you guys a couple things, I just wanted to um, give you guys a couple of reasons why you might downsize your square bill or you might downsize your crankbait. Um, and just to ramble off a few, you know, we're not going to be able to cover every situation in the world of why you might downsize, but I'm going to give you guys the biggest reasons why. And one of them um, would be that I would say is water temperature. You know, where where I'm up in New York right now, it's bitter cold up here, and the temperatures are on the drop pretty much everywhere around the country. And um, you know, fish sometimes they want to see a little bit less action when the water gets that cold, or they want to see a little bit less of a profile presentation. So downsizing due to water temperature, um, it could be because your fish are keyed in on very small bait. It could be like, for example, a full transition, and your fish are chasing very small shad. And um, you know you might really need to opt for a very small shad profile bait um, to really kind of match the hatch and to key in on the same profile bait that the fish are feeding in on. I'm going to show you guys some of these baits, um, and this way you get a better look at them. And I'm going to list everything down in the video description to what I talk about in this video, and this way you guys have a little bit of information on each one of the baits as well as you know the resources to go look at those baits up yourself. Now furthermore, it could be fishing pressure. You might be fishing behind guys in a tournament. 
those fish might have, may have seen a lot of baits on any given day and you might need to be able to downsize a little bit just to get those bites you know the, the, sometimes the fish are just in a bad mood and you have to figure out exactly what it, what type of adjustment you have to make to change their personality in order to make them feed all right guys so let's get right into this now like i said these are two of the, my favorite baits to downsize to if i'm in a situation where i feel like I need to downsize and I'm going to show you guys from example why um, because I've caught huge fish on both of these small baits um, now I used to have a bigger selection of the 1.0's the Strike King KVD 1.0's in different colors but I did lose a lot of them down south this season and I'm about to restock on those but um, I have the spectrum pretty much covered here. You know, I have a clear one right here. It's uh, transparent. I have a bold white, and then I have a craw pattern. So I pretty much have my spectrum covered, even though I'm running low. As you can see, I stock a little bit more of the Rick Clun baits. I have um, grown, you know, a little partial to these baits. I really like them a lot. But nonetheless, these are two different square bills, and let me show you why. All right, so let me give you guys a fair size comparison. Now, here is your KVD 1.0, and here is your KVD 1.5 right here, guys. So you can see those are the same model baits. It's just that those are different sizes. This is the size up from this bait. So now you can see exactly how small these baits are that I'm talking about. Now we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to take a Rick Klun RC2 and we're going to put it right next to its larger model of itself and you can automatically see the size difference. This is clearly the smaller bait right here. Now just throwing this on the scale right here, we can see we got 8.1 grams for the KVD 1.0 and for the Lucky Strike Rick Klun we have an 8.5. Now a lot of that might have to do with simply just the hooks, but I don't think so. And, you know, even though your um your Rick Klun square bills, your two series square bills, they are advertised as silent square bills. I don't know if you look online, that's how they advertise them. But if you put your hands around the hooks and the split rings, You could hear a very subtile little one knocker in there. There is a ball in there, guys, and you can see it. You know, it's, it's, it's in there. There's no denying it. You know, they don't advertise it to be a rattling square bill, but it absolutely does have a subtile one knocker in there, and that might aid to some of the weight in that square bill. Opposed to the KVD, it has no, you know, loose knocker in there. It does have a ball in there to, you know, balance the bait, but. As you can see, it is completely silent. Now, other differences I know about this bait. If you look at the bill of the 1.0, it is slightly bigger than the bill on your um, your RC2. Now, in my opinion, um, I think that the, um, the KVD 1.0 has a little bit of a deeper diving depth, even though they both dive from 2 to 4 feet. Um, on the package, but I mean we all know that the package is not going to tell you specifics unless you actually get in there and do the work yourself. So um, this guy might dive a little bit deeper um, than this guy and this one is silent opposed to this having a little bit of a one knocker. So those reasons alone are enough to really have an impact on how the fish might want to feed. So, you know, though, so, you know, I, I fish these guys hand in hand. If they're not going to bite this one, they might bite this one. As far as treble hooks go, you know, this is a Strike King bait. You know, I think we all pretty much know that you have to change your treble hooks on a Strike King bait. Um, you know, I think Strike King did a little bit better with their the treble hooks they've been putting on their baits lately, but they are still, you know, it, it's not it. You know, so what I'll do is is I will definitely change the the um the hooks on this bait no matter what. Opposed to you know your your Lucky Strike bait, this guy comes with a little bit better hooks on them. Um, you know, I have to say these are pretty decent hooks. I will still change them out. Um, you know, when they get worn or if I'm in a tournament, but better hooks than the 1.0. Um, now, aside from everything that comes stock on these baits, 
I want to talk to you guys about something that you could do to these baits to make them perform differently. And this is relative for a lot of crankbaits, for most, for pretty much all crankbaits. Now, right here, I have KVD triple grips. Um, I believe these guys are size six. And right here, I have my Hayabusa um, black nickel treble hooks um, that are also a size six. Now, here, right here, is um, your your RC2 with your triple grips on them. These are heavier hooks. They work really good. You're gonna stick a fish. The fish is staying on there. Now, this is gonna modify the action of this bait. These are heavier hooks, so your bait is gonna actually rise a little bit slower, and it's going to um, wobble a little bit more lazy. It might wobble a little wider, but it's gonna wobble lazy. So if the water is cold and you need to slow down your presentation and you know you don't want this thing to rise as quick, you want it to suspend a little bit more, now this that's the winter way to fish this fish. Put it on a slower gear ratio reel and you're gonna be cranking this thing nice and slow and that is gonna pull fish in. And I'll tell you, that presentation also works in the summertime when the fish are lethargic from the hot weather opposed to when in the wintertime when they're lethargic from the cold weather um, both sides of the extreme that that modification with that bait that works beautifully and it's not only for little square bills guys I do the same thing with the 5 series crankbaits if I want to slow down that wobble and I need that lazy mesmerizing presentation I will go to those triple grips now these number six Hayabusa black treble hooks, they are the same weight. They weigh 0.6, which is the same exact weight as these number six triple grips. So these, these two types of hooks right here, these are going to slow the wobble of your bait down. They're going to keep them down in the water column. They're going to stop them from rising a little bit more, you know, which is better for a colder water presentation to slow your bait action down. Um, why I know this is because I put everything on the scale and weigh it. Um, now these are two different hooks. You know this this one is gonna you know it's a little bit of a shorter shank, and these are a round bend. If your fish are swiping at your bait, the round bend might be it for you. If they're eating the whole thing, then those triple grips are going to be it. Those that's trial and error, but those are the two best style hooks that I would put on my bait. Now these baits come with light wire hooks on them already. You know this hook right here, it weighs 0.3 you know grams, and then you know the hook on the R2. It weighs, you know, about 0.4. So, you know, this this bait does weigh, you know, almost a half a gram more than this one, and it's because of that one knocker in there, as well as the treble hook that is a little bit beefier. But they are both light wire treble hooks. Now, if you want to stay with an erratic action, you like your bait rising fast, and you, you know, and you don't want to create a slower action for your bait, there are other treble hook choices that you could opt towards. And right here in my hand, I actually have five different choices and they will achieve different actions believe it or not now right here we already talked about we have our triple grip that's our um, must add KVD triple grip this hook right here um, it weighs 0. 0.6 that weighs the same exact thing as my Hayabusa number six black treble uh, nickel treble hook like we just said now if we want to go to a lighter hook for a faster wobble um, you know, we can experiment. You have a mega book, a mega bass um, cat sodge hook. If I'm saying that right, that's the same hook that um, style hook that comes on your mega bass vision 110s. So you know, it's a light wire hook. That's good for good you know hook pre um, penetration, light wire hook penetration, easy hook penetration on a fish. Has the reverse barbs on there. Um, right here we have the Gamakatsu Aaron Martin's Nano G Finesse treble hook. This thing has, you know, it has smaller barbs on it, which I don't particularly love, but you know what? That's why it's such a great hook because it, it has really good penetration. Now this hook weighs about 0.4. Um, oh, as well as the catch dog hook, this thing weighs about 0.4. Also, so these would be a really good, um, you know, modification to your bait if you wanted to keep your hook style light. And if you wanted to keep it as light as the baits that come on that, um, as light as the hooks that come on the bait itself, I have a Gamakatsu black nickel treble hook right here, round bend, and this is a number six, I believe. I mean, it could be a number eight, but I believe it's a number six. And this thing weighs 0.3 grams, so that's the lightest out of all these treble hooks, but out of all these five hooks that I just named right here, you will be able to pretty much do whatever you need to do for these baits. 
Now I know I sound really good when I talk, but where's the proof? You guys want to see something, you know, want to see something, right? Something visual, some type of evidence here. All right, well, this guy right here, I was fishing this guy with, um, in, it was pre-spawn slash spawn. I was on a good jig bite pattern and I actually won that tournament because of a fish I caught in the last five minutes on this exact crankbait, had stock hooks on it. I was fishing it very erratically. Um, in about two feet of water over a huge slate of rock. So um, caught a huge pre-spawn uh, largemouth on this bait to win that tournament. And um, the picture is right there if you want to see that. So that was an adrenaline rush. And uh, I mean, I got, I got the evidence for this bait too, actually right here. I'm pretty sure it might've been even that exact color. And I mean, I caught a large E over five on my kayak just just creeping real cold water uh, fishing grass lines that silent approach silent type style fishing ended up hitting a pot of fish and just jacking them You know, I got more stories and I got more pictures if you want to go back to the R2. Um, you know, now, this thing is freaking smallmouth killer, man. Freaking hit a whole pot of fish. Ended up catching a four-pounder on it. So, I mean, I could keep going, guys. I could keep going on and on. I've caught giants on these little crankbaits, and that's why I'm sharing with you guys some of my secrets today to how I caught those fish. Um, now, we can move on past those. I'm going to show you guys a couple more crankbaits, and then we'll wrap it up. Now, smaller style crankbaits that are worth the mention. Now, we're stepping out of this, um, this square bill category here. But right here, we have a Berkeley Flicker Shad. Um, I just kind of got on the wave with these little Flicker Shad baits recently, um, you know, fishing away from home, and, you know, the fish were very dialed in on small bait. So these little Flicker Shads right here help me put some fish in the boat, um, as well as the jointed Flicker Shad, both the same size, both small baits. I believe they're, you know, less than two and a half inches here, and um, they, this one will give you a little bit more of a cold water action you know, kind of like a flat sided crankbait. And you know, this one, this jointed crankbait will give you more of the erratic action. So, you know, they're the same size bait and you know, they, they, they give you a different action. So if you're gonna try one and then try the other, here's the perfect contrast to really work with right here. So you know what I mean? So that's a good way to eliminate um, your options. Uh, you know, just as a size comparison right here, this is the larger uh, flicker shad. Um, jointed flicker shad you could see you guys can see the uh, the size difference there's definitely a size difference there mind you this one's gonna dive a little bit deeper but we're talking small baits elephants do eat peanuts and other crankbaits I wanted to mention these are three series crankbaits this is a 5 series you know it's got more beef to it and this is a 5 XD but you know this 5 series and the 3 series they don't really have that much of a depth difference and this is a much smaller bait so something to keep in mind there when downsizing um, another bait that I will mention is this Spro Rock Crawler um, you know this is the smaller version this is the 4 um, this dives 4 to 8 feet this is the RK50 now this is a pretty small bait for its um, for its diving depth, and this is its big you know this is the larger size right here. That's the Rock Crawler 55, and for a bait that dives you know nine to 13 feet or whatever it is, this guy actually is a pretty small profile bait too. So I'm gonna link those guys in the description too. Um, I think I have one of these tied on right now, the 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 four to eight foot diver. So you can see that's a pretty small bait. Pretty, pretty little bait. Anyway, I think we covered enough about crankbaits before I run you guys too long into this. Um, we touched up on some good things, something worth mentioning here. I know we talked about treble hooks. If you want to put some good uh, split rings on your bait, you know, I would opt towards your hyperwire, owner hyperwire split rings. And um, just to recommend, the best pair of split ring pliers I've got my hands on are these Texas Tackle split ring pliers. Really good for working with small split rings and small baits. They have a really good fine feel to them and you could develop comfort for those things. 
Um, my other recommendation would be the Shimano's. Um, probably not going to say it right. I think they're called the Brewstas or the Brutistas, and I will um, put these in the video description too. Awesome for a little bit larger of a split ring. Um, so. Hope I didn't really leave too much out there, guys. And I hope you guys got some good information out of this video. Um, I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. And I will catch you guys soon. Check you later.